What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out the downward trajectory of WWE 2K. Now, I haven't played uh, the recent WWE 2K in uh, quite some time, so I don't know how true this is. So we're gonna check this out and uh, see what's going on with the, the latest WWE uh, 2K game, man. Let's get right into this one. Appreciate all love support. Let's see what's going on here, man. What is going on, guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Now, last time we talked about WWE 2K24, we were pretty shocked by the crazy price of the new final boss rock, my faction character. While well, things have gone downhill even from there, we're talking about a broken online experience that's left fans frustrated and disappointed. The my faction mode, which was already a sore spot last year, has somehow gotten even worse. On top of that, it feels like the developers have completely ignored the feedback from the WWE 2K community. This isn't about just small glitches, we're seeing major issues that should have been addressed. And if that wasn't bad enough, they managed to release what might be the worst DLC pack in the history of WWE games. Not just the 2K series, but all WWE games ever. How did we end up here? What decisions what led to such a steep real? decline in quality? Well, we're going to dive deep into the downward spiral of 2K24, looking at the major missteps and poor choices that left fans feeling let down. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the downward trajectory of WWE 2K24. A 2K24 was originally revealed to much excitement from fans of the mm -hmm. series. With so many new additions and returning features from the past WWE games, it looked like this one was going to be one of the best WWE 2K releases to date. And fast forward to the release and many people were initially happy with what they got. The review scores were just as solid as 2K23's, yeah. which had set a high standard. However, with WWE 2K24, the game started to feel stale much sooner than 2K22 and 2K23 did. The first DLC was a grueling two month wait and by the time it was finally released, many players were already burnt out on the game that felt lacking in content. It became clear that 2K24 wasn't something players could enjoy consistently. The ECW pack was still a much needed boost for the game and the patches that followed added some great stuff, temporarily improving the experience. But after the ECW Punk pack, things started to unravel, revealing signs that 2K24 was moving in the wrong direction. Now we've discussed this before in our previous video, but one of the major turning points according to many in the community was the introduction of the Persona cards for the Rock and Roman Reigns 24. These cards cost players up to $400 of real money to acquire, Whoa. which sparked outrage and disappointment amongst fans. Damn. 2K quickly made it clear that their main focus within 2K24 was on monetization efforts, particularly within the My Faction mode. This shift became noticeable as updates started to offer less and less value to the players. I take the recent damn bro, they pulling a Activision slash uh, EAW type model. Four hundred dollars potentially that you would have to spend to get certain cards. That's 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 insanity. Insane. Date for example, which dropped yesterday, it added virtually nothing new to the game and seemed to serve only as a way to introduce more My Faction Persona cards. It's apparent that this is where 2K's priorities lie and it's likely to stay this way until it's time to start hyping up 2K25 in January. Now imagine if these updates actually included meaningful content that would reignite players' interest. We're talking about adding updated music, new entrances, new trons, updated commentary, new arenas and even updates to the characters themselves. And WWE superstars are known for- They don't want to do that because that would cost them more money to do. If they did that, it would be a great business model for obviously the product and it would keep players wanting to play, which ultimately makes them more money. But I don't think they want to do that. They don't. For frequently changing their looks. So it makes perfect sense to use these updates to keep the game current. Look at USC 5, which was released five months before 2K24. That game is still receiving likeness updates to keep it fresh. And it's been nearly a year since its release. In contrast, 2K24 hasn't even been out for half a year, yet it already feels like support has dwindled despite multiple DLC packs still on the horizon. And then there are the online modes, which have been nothing short of a disaster in 2K24. Players have continuously reported that online matches hardly ever work, with frequent uh -huh. disconnections and making the experience incredibly frustrating. Yep. Even when it seems like 2K is on the verge of fixing something like the online modes, a new patch often ends up breaking even more of the game, including offline modes. It's like taking one step forward and then a hundred steps back with each update. Instead of improving the game, these patches often do more harm than good, leaving the community disheartened and questioning 2K's commitments to delivering a stable, enjoyable gaming experience. 
But let's look at the latest controversy surrounding 2K24 stemming from the new release DLC packs simply called the Pat McAfee pack, which mm. features Pat and some of his hosts from his show. From the moment it was announced, this pack was met with widespread disdain with players oh. openly expressing their disinterest and disappointment. However, the drama surrounding this pack didn't even stop there. At one point, there was even hope that the Pat McAfee pack might be a joke and this would be revealed that the Wyatt 6 would actually be the DLC. The theory gained traction, especially with the lack of updates and the mysterious messages from the Wyatt 6 appearing on the Pat McAfee show, including one that stated, you lied. Many fans speculated that this was a clever tie-in and that the Wyatt 6 would ultimately be announced as the real DLC instead That shit, that would have made sense. <clears throat> I think a lot of people would like Pac, so you could have had him in there, but I don't know about his other co-hosts being in the game, because I didn't know who that- I didn't know who they were, because initially they just- he showed it at the beginning of the video, but that's like his co-host. No. People will play as Pat, but not as his co- who cares? We only care about Pat in the sense of we don't know his co-host like that. So I don't know. That's a that's a weird decision. Instead of this odd pack featuring Pat McAfee and his mates, with the delay in information and 2K social media accounts promising updates about the next DLC on July 23rd, many fans were left excited and speculating. Could there be some exciting additions to the pack? Could there be an entirely different DLC pack announced? Unfortunately, the reality was far more or less exciting. The big reveal was that the DLC had been delayed by a week, and the major announcement was that they added a football as a weapon to the game alongside the Pat McAfee pack. As you can imagine, this left the community completely outraged. After all that anticipation and teasing, this was the big news. When the patch finally went live yesterday, it confirmed that the pack was happening as planned and that all of Pat McAfee's hosts had been added to the game. No. Many players had hoped that if this controversial DLC pack was indeed going to happen, then it would at least be packed with some cool and exciting new moves, turning it into a sort of DLC move pack. Although some new moves were added, it was largely what you expect from a typical 2K DLC pack. Notable additions included Darby Allen's Coffin Drop and Will Ospreay's Hidden Blade. However, with only around 20 moves added, it hardly constituted a moves pack that would generate excitement. This lack of substantial new content only fueled more frustration within the community. Fans felt let down Obviously. by the meager additions and the overall execution of the DLC, which did little to enhance the game experience. But what made this DLC particularly insulting to 2K players was the missed opportunity to include many NXT superstars who would have been much more exciting and anticipated additions to the game. With NXT gaining a lot of hype recently, especially with the TNA crossover, there was golden opportunity yeah. to update the game with fresh, relevant content. The community was buzzing with potential ideas for an NXT-themed DLC, which would have been far more appealing. There were even rumors that Pat McAfee pack caused a potential NXT pack to be cancelled. Although we can't confirm that rumor, some have found evidence suggesting that certain NXT superstars were planned to be included, but they were ultimately left out. It's unclear if this was directly due to the McAfee pack, but the speculation only added fuel to the fire. But frustrations with 2K escalated further when Pat McAfee on his show criticized fans who were unhappy with the DLC pack and the game in general. To make matters worse, the official WWE 2K account responded to the video with laughing emojis, seemingly mocking the community's concerns. In the video, one of Mac yeah, Pat, he got to be aware that, bruh, yeah, we appreciate you being in WWE, being a fan, but most people that are buying the game, they want to play as, like, some of their favorite wrestlers. We love you. We love you on commentary. We don't want to play as your co-host. That's a waste of fucking storage on the game. <laughs> we can play as you. That's cool. But we want other wrestlers that we're interested in not your co-host so you got to understand it from that point like nobody nobody's sitting up here say, saying oh yeah i would love to play as pat mcafee's co-host that's a waste of a dlc i'm being honest and i i think pat mcafee's dope he has a great show love what he's doing that's awesome but you gotta have some type of self-awareness like i right, i don't know about this i not as my like I love my codes, but this should be involved for just mainly the the wrestlers. So I don't know, man. McAfee's host went as far as saying "f them" in response to the backlash. This interaction left many feeling that the 2K team was way more interested in mocking their own players than in listening to their feedback and addressing yeah. the concerns. The post was later deleted due to the overwhelming backlash it received. 
When it's all said and done, this DLC pack is undoubtedly going to be going down as the worst DLC pack ever released for a WWE game. And that's saying something, considering there have been some real stinkers in the past. Remember the 2K20 originals? Those are starting to look good in comparison to this DLC. All the controversies surrounding 2K and 2K24 are starting to add up, and it feels like the 2K bubble might burst again if 2K doesn't take notice that they are losing the fans' trust and interest once again. They are. They were let off the hook after the disastrous 2K20 due to the much better release of 2K22, but the honeymoon phase is over. Uh -huh. Fans are rightfully expecting more from the series and want to be listened to more when it comes to fixes and improvements. However, as we mentioned earlier, it feels like the only priority right now is the monetization practices, particularly through my faction cards, along yep. with doing DLC to make that WWE and right. Pat McAfee That's happy, the gaming industry. instead of the actual fans who are paying for the DLC and paying for the games. Our fans are definitely starting to feel a disconnect with 2K, and as 2K25 season approaches, many of these issues should be remembered when 2K starts pushing for pre-orders of the new game. It's becoming clear that 2K25 will need significant improvements and changes to win back the community's trust. Otherwise, 2K risks getting closer to the mishandling scene with AEW Fight Forever, which serves as a prime example of how not to handle a wrestling game. AEW Fight Forever is nearly dead a year after its release, largely due to its constant ignoring of the fans' requests to make the game better. Now we gotta be fair, 2K is nowhere near as bad as AEW Fight Forever, but the way the community is being treated is starting to become shockingly similar. Fans want to see meaningful updates, better communication, and a genuine effort to address their concerns. If 2K is on its current path, they risk alienating the very people who supported the franchise in the first place. What do you guys think of this? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, man, this is this is unfortunate. It really is. It really is. I hadn't, like I said, I hadn't played the game in a while since it originally came out that's when me and doug was playing it but um it's it's one of those type of things where if they don't get up on like get up on fixing the problems and actually listening to the community feedback when them the next game try to you know comes out and rolls out and them pre-order numbers not looking too good the investors gonna be like what's going on why why nobody's buying the game that's how you lose the fan base more and more you have to find a way to listen to the fan base because they are the ones essentially paying for what's going on without the fans there is no game because you're making the game anticipating the fans to buy in to the game and the product that you're selling so comment down below let me know how do y'all feel about uh wwe 2k24 are you guys still playing the game are you guys enjoying it or have you stopped playing it a while ago let me know how y'all feel about it bro. i appreciate all the love support road to 50k appreciate y'all kicking me see you next one peace